Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today, the map I'm going to be exploring is GM Liminal Gallery. Now, last week, I explored a map by the name GM Void Spaces, which, among many other interesting things, also featured a space which I found kind of inspiring. And that was an area which looked like an art gallery, but contained a window showing GM Liminal Hotel. And I, I kind of thought that idea was kind of cool, just like a gallery of different liminal spaces, which is essentially what maps like that are, but this one seems to take that more literally. And I took it as a sign that I noticed a suggestion for it right after that video went up. Now, interestingly also, uh, when I went on the workshop page, it noted that this map was inspired by concepts discussed in my videos. Now, for as much as I talk about horror and related concepts, it's one thing to critique things, and another thing entirely to actually create something. And I myself haven't really created anything, except for maybe a couple of short stories that I wrote back in high school. And so, for people who are actually going out and creating things, to say that they're in some way inspired by concepts that I've talked about, it makes it feel like I'm having some kind of influence on the genre, that however small, I'm kind of contributing to the topic, and that's a really cool feeling. So I'm really curious to go forward and see what this map's all about. And I like it already. <laughs> this isn't like any gallery I've ever been to, but I always do appreciate it when the building itself is a piece of art. Now, I believe it might have been mentioned on the workshop page that these four paintings in this area, and I'll stop and look at each one so you can get a good look at each, is maybe AI-generated? Uh, AI imagery, all, all kinds of things relating to AI creating, is something that I find so fascinating. I mean, I don't understand the first thing about it, but from what little I've gathered... Images like this are created by computers essentially interpreting tons of images in which it's basically told what it is, and eventually it's able to gather common concepts, common images and themes, and essentially able to create something new using those concepts that it's learned. And so, you know, it's like this, it looks like nothing you've ever seen, but I'm fairly sure that we can imagine that this is probably a cityscape at night, looking from the other side of a river. Or at least that's what it seems like to me. It's always so interesting to me to look at these AI-generated images, and again, it could be I'm completely misunderstanding how this works, and try to figure out, like, what was it trying to make? And, you know, over time, it seems like they get closer and closer to their mark. Now, AI-generated stories, on the other hand, I think are basically the next big thing in comedy. Remember years back, there was that AI that tried to do this? And basically it had the effect of turning everything into blotchy, bulbous dogs? Huh. This exhibition is clearly not handicapped accessible. <laughs> this is going to make my stomach drop. <laughs> oh, this is not good. <clears throat> oh, I see. <laughs> We're using Minecraft logic in Gary's Mod. Landing in any amount of water breaks your fall. Oh, now we've got four different ways we can go. I guess let's just pick a spot and move then. Oh, not before we gather up a friend, though. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's not physics. Oh, this is cool. This actually kind of reminds me of several games I've played in the past, such as Modern Warfare 2, which have kind of a faux museum that you can unlock where you can view different in-game assets, but they kind of go the extra step and actually have it look as if it were a museum by actually modeling, like, out-of-bounds areas. It's kind of a neat meta thing to do. Yeah, but meanwhile, though, we've got all this overgrowth hanging down. Sort of giving a Portal 2 vibe. This 
some nice sky shots in this section of the gallery. Oh, there's so many branching paths. At least there's a central hub, though, so we know where we're going to have to go back to. Ah. I can see the floor fall off there. Oh. <laughs> ah, that actually fooled me. I thought there was going to be something crazy going on here. But it is, in fact, just a back room. Kind of feels like I've wandered off the tour and now I'm somewhere I'm not supposed to be. And just like being in that situation, instead of going back and asking for help, I'm going to be letting my curiosity get the better of me now. Let's see what's over here. Hmm. <laughs> They've actually gone and modeled like a whole staff area. Actually, come to think of it, I, I wonder, this must actually be like a... Oh, it's a mirror. <laughs> right? Right, it's got... Wait. Oh, I see. It goes between those tables, so it looks like one long table, but the mirror is actually between them. I see. Okay, yeah. God, that is so creepy. I've never actually looked at my own reflection this close before, seen all these movements that the game is interpreting my body is making. Also, I do not like that facial expression, the eyes staring directly into mine. Uh, I was not expecting a jump scare on this map, but anyway, uh, back to what I was saying. Don't like turning my back on that either. Ugh. Okay, um, well anyway, as I was saying, lost my train of thought, that's the scariest thing ever. That must be, like, a common fear that kids have, because how many episodes of, like, Goosebumps, Are You Afraid of the Dark, all that stuff, involves kids going to some place they find interesting, being bored on a tour, leaving the tour, and ending up somewhere they're not supposed to, where all kinds of scary stuff happens. It's the kind of thing that I always wanted to happen to me as a kid, but I would probably hate in practice. Alright, so we can't go over there. Let's continue exploring this back area, then. I wonder if these elevators work? Probably not, right? No. Okay. Less different directions for me to be pulled in. Wow. Uh, I've always been just mesmerized by very high, like almost impossibly high, indoor ceilings. It almost feels like the kind of thing you'd only see in a dream. Oh, I thought there was something on the tables that we could look at, but it looks like it's just these weird slots. Uh, can we go through this door? No. Alright, let's see what's up there then. There's also just something really weird about a tree with a ceiling over it. It's like a domestication, like the ultimate domestication of nature, to grow trees where there's no sunlight. Hello. It took my eyes a second to adjust and realized this wasn't just looking out onto a night sky. Oh no! No, 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 no. I, I'm starting to see how this map was inspired by me. This is everything I absolutely hate all at once. Not only have they put in a presumably very deep pool of water, it's completely pitch black and with blind corners all over. This is the room designed to defeat the librarian. And for that reason, I'm going to come back to it later, because I don't feel up to it right now. Uh. Hmm... The stairs are clipped. Stairs are clipped. A million points for Gryffindor. 
Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but a lot of times with these explorers, it kind of takes me a little while to wake up and really get into the commentary. I, I really got to be in it for a little bit to get into that headspace. And I don't want to hit that until I'm, I really feel like I'm fully there. Hello. Huh. That's odd. It's like a film set, but there's just some strange metal object occupying the stage. I can't wait to get down there and see what that's about. Not that it really needs to be about anything, given the context of this map. Is that what I think? Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, that is so cool. I love seeing stuff like this. Okay, uh, what's the what's the running tally of maps that have done this? It's uh, this uh, post-USSR, which unfortunately I missed in that video, but I pinned a screenshot as the top comment, and uh, post-Soviet Yard. Yes. Oh, look, there's even a little lit candle to go with it. Oh, that is so cool. Hello. I thought those were like some kind of weird lighting fixture from down the hall, but now I see it's an entire table and chair set up just glued to the wall. Oh, this must lead down to the film set. Oh, this is so weird, because it's like a familiar scene, you know, of a movie set. Like, we all intuitively understand what a movie set is, and it's got everything to make it that. We've got the false walls, the lighting, the vehicles for moving heavy objects around. But we can't comprehend what exactly it is they're meant to be filming. And it goes back to the concept that I brought up in uh, Schlepp's Liminal Space, which is basically... A lot of liminal spaces end up feeling like something that doesn't understand humanity is trying to imitate it. Uh, is this Philip Jeffries? I guess we'll never know. God, this thing is creeping me out so much. I wonder if part of it has to do with the fact that, you know, it's just, like, a general, like, long shape that gets, like, larger and rounder towards the end. Like, it makes it feel like a person is standing here, even though it's just some metal or possibly, like, granite object. Or maybe it's kind of like, maybe it's kind of like those AI images we saw a while back, where there's a little bit of unnervingness to looking at something that almost looks like something we understand, but we just can't make out what it is? Alright. Now, I am not looking forward to finding out just how deep this water is. Uh, so let's pull out our handy-dandy flashlight and dive in. Oh, we can't! Okay, thank you! Thank you, creator! <laughs> oh, I am so grateful for that! Um, unfortunately, I promised a trip into here, so no clip. Oh. This is deep. Definitely deep. It'll be scarier if we're on the surface, though. Oh, my light doesn't even penetrate this. It's like it just stops right after there. I'm hoping what's going to happen is I'm going to run into an invisible wall. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what's happening. Yeah, okay, that's it. Wow. It's even creepier from this angle. The light reflecting off the surface. And darkness around, almost like a vignetted photograph. You know, something that I've talked about a couple of times recently, but I feel like I haven't said much. I get a certain fear from knowing how I'll look to an observer. Like, often when I'm exploring abandoned buildings, if I hear someone com coming, I'll just kind of sit in a corner and wait, hoping, hoping for them to pass. But then I kind of start to creep myself out, knowing how I'll look if they happen to spot me. Like, I, I don't know, there's just a certain anxiety in being the scary thing. And now I'm imagining, what if somebody else were to walk in that door right now and look over and just see me bobbing up and down in the water? Let's see if there's anything past these pillars. Nothing much. Okay. Yeah, by having those black edges, it really makes this place seem endless. 
Uh, but I am certainly ready to get out of here, so let's just noclip our way back up. Imagine if noclip just suddenly wasn't working. And let's head our way back. <sighs> Parkour. And we were able to make a left over here. Oh, this goes farther down. Now those are some irregular shapes. Uh. Imagine you just hear the echoing sound of something tumbling down and you just feel like you have to run out of here, slowly wading, pushing against the water before you find out what's about to fall down that hole. Even more he is. Oh, you go back quite a ways. What about you? Ah, this is the water exhibition, I see. Ooh. <laughs> now isn't this comfy? Ah, oh, this looks like a really nice bed. Hang on. I'll take that. Ah, oh, nothing's physics on this map. Can't take anything with me. But yeah, this looks like it would be a nice place if it weren't attached to... Well, the rest of this building. Oh, let's be real. It's nice even with it. Although it would be very disorienting to wake up, stumble out of your room, and... Oh! Wander around in this. Okay, this creator is just making fun of me at this point. <laughs> oh, my... Ugh. Yo. That was a really weird little jitter that happened right at the end there, and I don't like the look in your eyes. Okay, are we going to promise no more mirrors? Right? Right? Okay. Do a full circle around to make sure there's no horrific entities laying in wait. And we can continue down the hall. Ooh. All the fun of a park without the park. I think I've also spoken before, maybe in the uh, Cement Mixer video, or maybe Hendicad, about how weird it is to see, like, grass textures and stuff indoors. And vice versa. Uh, have I interrupted something? <laughs> this almost looks like some invisible council has gathered to decide this watermelon's fate. Um, if it's a physics object, I would like to take it with me and spare it whatever horrific fate you have in store for it. No? Okay, this is not a matter for mortals, I can see. And another of these. <laughs> but <laughs> I guess they're temporarily using this room as a storage closet. Whatever. I hope these are food boxes that haven't yet made it to the freezer. Okay, so I looked at this for like a while and my brain just shorted and did not come up with a comment at all. But just look at this hallway, like looking back in reverse, it's even weirder. Because you kind of, when you go the other way, you kind of move through this space and you just see like, you know, a slightly bare hotel hallway. But when you look at it the other way, and you can really see how harsh that transition is all in one image. Yeah, now that is some classic liminal imagery. The cursed thing about this to me, though, is how you have to, like, kind of turn around and lean over really far to get at that toilet paper. Like, that should be higher up and closer to the thing. Do you guys see that? Huh. It's like if I stand over here, it's like it just shows my view. And it moves with my head. Let's go through here. This space wall looks kind of interesting. Ooh. Okay, now I am definitely getting some ideas from this, because I believe I mentioned in the... in the Places You've Seen in Your Dreams video, I noted that a lot of liminal space images 
kind of evoke memories of like 90s children's play space like decoration styles and architecture and in that way like you know it's very linked to nostalgia places that feel really dark with like this neon colored lighting and they kind of have that movie theater effect where you go in and you just lose track of time because it's so dim and then when you finally step outside at the end of the day you can't believe it's still daylight you've gotten so lost in the atmosphere of it Under construction. Doesn't look like there's anything under construction here. Uh, I'll come back around to that. Always scares me when I accidentally slap something in my room. Hello, door. What happens if we open you? I don't know what I expected, but it definitely got my nerves on edge. Hello? Oh, the ceiling just slants down. Okie doke. Hmm. It's almost like an endless entrance hall. It's actually sort of reminding me of the way to the kids' room in, like, a movie theater or something. All these winding back halls that are actually mighty suspicious. I'm truly touched by this magnificent artwork. This looks shady. I would always look at those staff-only doors, those hallways that go off into even greater darkness than what the building is already in. And I would just wonder, like, what goes on back there? There must be something so cool back there. They're holding out on us. That's where they're hiding all the good games and rides and stuff. But then I would also think that maybe there's something eh, really shady going on there. Hello. Ah, it is meant to be a movie theater. Yeah, this whole time, I, I was kind of getting more vibes of, like, a laser tag place or some kind of arcade. Hello. And yeah, maybe this place is dealing in some shady business. Although they're not so great at covering up. That looks like a custom panel. Can we maybe open this garage door? No, it doesn't seem like it. Although I'll definitely revisit this when I do my no-clip run at the end of the map. I would bet that this probably leads to the screen itself. Yes. Oh, there's a weird hum in here. Very nice seats for a movie theater, though. <laughs> I love the way I love the way I just kind of like sauntered up, head facing sideways. Nice positioning. <laughs> oh, there's even a projector and everything. Now that's cursed. Having the concession area be right off to the side of the screen. Can you imagine what a nightmare that would be? People constantly walking back and forth with hot dogs and stuff? The noise from people opening up containers and eating over here? Oh, this would be a terrible movie theater. Yeah, a very nice little restaurant. Why is it here? <laughs> I, I have to remember every once in a while to just turn back and look down the way I came to see things from the opposite perspective. Because I was ready to walk out of here not really thinking much of this, aside from the <laughs> horrible placement this would be in real life. And I realize, you know, this is exactly an image that I would see in a dream. Those kind of dreams that kind of combine things that I would think as awesome, and at the same time really creepy. Especially since in these dreams I would usually be alone in these places. I either be alone, 
or start off with friends having fun and suddenly find myself alone and unable to navigate my way to them. Up and over. Oh, on, on a note sort of related to what I said about these seats earlier. So movie theater seats are getting better and cooler in my experience. I used to not really think much of movies or seeing them in theaters. I obviously didn't see any during the pandemic, but I've seen two in the last couple months since they've been back. One was The Batman, which definitely benefited from the theater's sound system. The other more recently was Top Gun, which had these seats, these 40X seats that like do the whole like Disney simulator thing. I knew I was in for a ride when we walked in and sat down and I saw a little button on my armrest that said water on off. And these things like move around, there's like flashing lights, they like whip you with little wires or whatever and jets of air, it's crazy. It's like the full 4D experience in a regular movie theater. It was great, it was great to experience Top Gun that way. Uh, it was really annoying during the trailers for all those other movies. Also, those things don't just move, like, a little bit. They move a lot. Like, somebody's going to get launched out of one of those things, and I don't see how you can leave and come back during the movie. Like, what happens if you show up late? Hello. Is this where we store the radioactive melons? Also, why am I not making footsteps anymore? Okay, I still have sound. Okay, there we go. That was weird. Uh, these are the back areas, I guess. Imagine Googling that on WebMD. Why do my footsteps not make a sound anymore? <laughs> oh, these melons are starting to become a recurring theme. Oh, wow. Wow, those glowing dots on the wall just completely fall off the farther up you go. I can't even see the ceiling. It makes this seem impossibly high, like the bottom of some kind of crazy deep shaft. What do you guys have to do with this? Uh, once again, not a physics proper. I would have kicked you just now. These watermelons are almost becoming like a joke on this map. Uh, kind of like the cacti on... What was that called? Growing map. Sorry, I gotta get myself back into liminal exploration mode. I got myself all excited talking about the new Top Gun. Ah, here we go. Now we're up on top. And once again, we're seeing someplace we've already been from another angle. Yeah, the melons are definitely in charge of this joint. Uh, is there anything across the way that we can do? No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, just for the heck of it, let's try walking over this and see how badly that triggers my vertigo. Alright, slowly now. Oh, there's an invisible wall. Can we subvert that with no clip? Yeah, we can. Oh, it's a good thing this whole thing is one thing to clip. And it's a good thing there's no actual gaps in the collision box. Oh, I don't like that at all. <laughs> you know how they say don't look down? In these situations, I can do nothing but look down. <laughs> okay, I had gotten so used to the idea that there were no gaps. Turns out there's gaps. And conveniently, here we back are. That was a sentence. Uh, right side, why not? Closest thing. Uh, now this is looking more like the classic back rooms. At least in terms of the wallpaper at play. And things are a little bit more shadowy. A little bit more ominous. There's just something about... A washing machine sitting in shadows. It's something I've encountered more often than you'd think. See, now this is actually the kind of bathroom that, like, 
You know, I get it's supposed to be like run down and moldy. This actually looks really comfy. Just small with a nice big deep bathtub and a slanted ceiling. Everything you need. A place to just shut everyone out and relax. Much like the rest of this room. This is Major just sitting in the den after a long day and watching some TV or playing some video games vibes. Everyone together, but no one acknowledging each other. Maybe one person or two sitting on the couch playing video games. Another at the counter on their laptop. Somebody reading at the table. Yeah, that's the kind of interaction I live for. The kind where everyone's alone together. Uh, is this closed? Is there a window here? No, I can get through. See, this is the kind of thing. Like, this would be creepy if there weren't a wall around it. But because there is, it's just a small little yard, porch lights on. It just seems like a nice little extension, a nice little backdrop to whatever activities you're doing inside. Although I really have to question the wisdom of the placement of these swings. Doesn't really look like you could do much without slamming headfirst into that wall. Although you could maybe, like, if you had a partner, you could have somebody sit in the swing, and then you pull it back, and then try to launch yourself over the wall. What was in here? I opened this door, and, ah, it's another one of these. You know what? If I were to sleep somewhere on this map, I would sleep here. I don't know what it is about these, like, slanted ceilings just on the corner that make a room feel so, like, compact and so cozy. Uh, especially if you put some, like, skylights on it, or, I don't know, would I want that? All right, whatever, <laughs> I'm not playing House Flipper right now. I'm here to explore some liminal spaces. I feel like I'm getting really distracted really easily on this map. This one's nice too, but it's just a little bit long for me. I prefer to have my own little cozy shoebox to sleep in. Why do I hear boss music? I'm walking a little bit faster just for the company of my own footsteps. A chair. Why do I feel like I've been called into the principal's office? Look at that, can't you just feel the judgment? Can I move you? No. Okay, just like everything on the map, I can't move you. Interact? No? Okay. That's good. That's just how I like it. I was half expecting a jump scare. Oh, there's much more to this. Let's just take a... No! I can't get through! Ah, oh, these gaps are just too narrow for me to squeeze through. Hey guys, waiting for something? I hope it's a bus, so I can get out of here. Stop, why, why? Okay, correction, this is like getting called into the principal's office. Uh, you wanted to see me, sir? Actually, eh, can I open this drawer and get my Walkman back? it. Good boy. Wow, it's just like a looping hall with, like, random things off to the sides. Although I do appreciate its relative linearity. May have spoken too soon. <laughs> huh. Uh, Philip Jeffries, fancy seeing you here again. Are you following me? Now that's kind of interesting. Even more so than the watermelons, it's just taken that image from earlier and kind of made it seem more sinister, like 
that object that you can already, for some reason, for, for no logical reason, feel some kind of, like, malice coming from. And now seems to be stalking me. Things narrow considerably here. In fact, they narrow to roughly just the right width for you to come through. It almost seems like you could start chasing me and I'd have no way to get around you. <laughs> I don't like this at all. Yeah, definitely taking advantage of that classic liminal concept of a large room with light furnishings. A whole lot of people, but separated from each other in a gigantic space. Uh, let's just pick a direction and go, I guess. Hello, watermelon. Oh, this loops back in around on this. Okay, so when we finished exploring this, we finished exploring the gallery, I think. Now what is this? Oh, I don't like it when they creep open slowly like that. I especially don't like it when there's water in the dark. I think, now that I really think about it, I think the idea of water in a dark room is so creepy to me because you already can't see really when you're underwater. And to know that even when you come to the surface, you'll still be blind to what's around you. Awful, but somehow the red light makes it even worse. Like, if you were to come above the water and look around and there were to be another head floating beside you, it would take your eyes a second to adjust. How deep is it, though? Oh, very deep, very deep, very deep, very deep. Ooh, oh, and that falls off so quickly. Oh, that realization actually jumped my heart. And I've, look, I've jumped into plenty of bodies of water in this game that turned out to be deeper than expected, but for some reason, that was just so much worse. I'm actually clutching my chest right now. All right, um, let's have another look. Oh, that is so deep. So, how did I know I would find one of you here? How did I know that this would be my reward for pursuing this avenue? Oh, wait, I mean... I don't know why it's so satisfying to do that. So, I'm assuming that this is a lie. I've learned not to trust exit signs, especially given the previous map I explored. Hello? <laughs> I'm just kind of used to seeing my reflection at this point. Hmm. Uh, well, I suppose it's an exit by some interpretations? Now here's an image that just feels cursed. Uh, sleeping quarters, just in the middle of a hallway. I think it's th for the same reason that like toilets and all that stuff in a hallway kind of skeeves me out, and it's because it's, it's just the total lack of privacy in some place where you really should have it. Hi. And this is also the Hall of Judgmental Chairs. Yep, how did I know? <laughs> Uh, I'm so annoyed that I can't kick them. Every time I run up to one trying to get it to move, I, I feel like I'm kicking one of those, like, cement balls outside of Target. Yeah, and once again, looking back, I mean, look at that image, how busy it is. This could almost be a painting all its own. And yet, when we look at it from the other angle, 
from when we came in. It looks a lot more barren. So crazy how differently you can see a space just by looking at it from a physically different angle. But I believe at this point I have explored all there is to explore. So that was GM Liminal Gallery, and I thought it was so cool. I feel like it's taking inspiration from, like, the whole spectrum of liminal space imagery. It's got places that are, like, crazy huge and cavernous with weird architecture like this. It's got more compact strange architecture like we saw in some of the water areas, and not to mention exploiting some of my bigger phobias regarding large, dark bodies of water. It's got places that have that, you know, I wandered off where I'm not supposed to be vibes. It's got places that have that weird construction combined with childhood nostalgia. Oh, it's just got everything. And for that reason, it really lives up to its name. It is a liminal gallery. Not just in terms of being an art gallery with liminal architecture, but also kind of a showcase of different types of liminal spaces. I feel like even if you didn't know anything about liminal spaces, you could come in here as a first-timer and gain a lot of inspiration. It's kind of fitting that this map opens with a gallery of AI-generated images, because the epiphany that I've kind of had while making this video is that liminal spaces almost feel like 3D architecture created by an AI. Almost like different images from, like, different places and times were fed into it, and using only that information with no additional context, created human habitats. I, I always used to compare it to, like, aliens building a, a habitat for humans, like a cage, but I feel like AI is the more appropriate way to put it. And of course, I always love to see stuff like this. Makes me feel like I contributed something, even though what really happened was somebody else contributed something and slapped my sticker on it. But if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to give this map a download for yourself, of course that will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.